Okay. Hi, so welcome uh, to our first monthly ColorVal lab class. This is a monthly session when uh, learners can come to Blue Canoe and ColorVal for uh, answers to questions and for a short class with me where we focus on a new skill and a new application each time. This is also a session where we've invited our ColorVal teachers worldwide to join us. So that's why we call it a lab class. It's this notion of a moment where I'll be teaching you and teachers in the room can also watch how that works and maybe also pitch in a little bit with ideas. So welcome to everybody here. I'm Karen Taylor, co-author of the Color Val Chart and Head of Education at Blue Canoe. Uh, today, our topic is Color Vowels in the Real World, uh, specifically strategies for teaching yourself spontaneously. So the question really is when you're using Blue Canoe, uh, you may feel like, well, I know how to do this when I'm using the app. But what do I do when I'm not using Blue Canoe? And, and how do, specifically, how can I use this open hand concept in public places where uh, it may seem kind of odd if I talk like this all the time? <laughs> uh, in fact, if we say, hello, everybody, I'm so glad to see you, um, you might get some strange looks, right? Uh, so I was thinking of, of ways that I could bridge that. And then I, the more I thought about it, I wanted to help us all realize, first of all, what is the open hand for? And then I'll show you what we might be able to do with it, okay? Um, so let's remember what it does. Uh, the hand is not just the opening of the hand, uh, but rather the, the extending of the arm. And if you've heard me say this before, you'll, you'll hear me say it again. It's a perfect built-in measure of the time that you need to spend on the stressed vowel. And so if you find yourself doing this out of a habit with, uh, for example, when you're using Blue Canoe, you want to rewire that to be an extension of the arm, you will have to slow down in order to do it. And that slowing down in the time of the vowel is precisely what you need to uh, do better in Blue Canoe, to improve your scores, and also to improve your comprehensibility. So I have this word here for you, uh, which I heard earlier today, and it, it, it sort of fascinates me today. Um, it's the word associate. Go ahead and try that. Associate. Associate. Okay. And it fascinated me because this is the noun form, and of course the verb form can change a little to associate, but we'll come to that. So associate, we now know, has that open hand on that stressed syllable, the second syllable, right? And if we don't have the stress in the right place, that word is not comprehensible. Um, I heard somebody say something like associate, associate, and it took several turns for me to hear it. So, all right, so the hand marks that stress. We know this. Um, it also, and this may be a bit of a surprise, the hand can help you perform tricky vowel sounds, actually, uh, especially if you've been working with a teacher uh, who knows these strategies beyond what you might already know, um, you can use it to remind yourself. So if we look at the word associate again, or listen more, more specifically, what vowel do we hear? Associate, right? Rose, boat. Now, if you have your hand here, go ahead and say rose, boat. Rose, boat, O. Oh. Now, for now, you have to know that this is a moving vowel, but we can actually use our hand to remind you of the movement. So now try the refined hand, which is rose, boat, O. Oh. Rose, boat, O. Oh. So I'm using my hand to signal that I'm also having to move my lips to a closed position. Uh, this movement will be the same for all of the moving vowels, and we'll review those in just a moment. But on my chart here, if I just step back for a minute, um, on the color vowel chart itself, here's rose, boat, o. Okay? So uh, this hand going up can be a reminder to take your time to close it, especially if you don't have this behavior for the o vowel in your language. Okay? And a lot of languages don't have the same closing of the lips that we do. So associate associate, associate. Okay, try that one more time with me. Associate, right? 
Um, lots of words have this sound in it, and it's a critical sound. It must move. So using your hand there is, is really helpful. Um, now I'll come back to the question of what can you do apart from the practice moment, meaning that moment when you're in a meeting, uh, that moment when you're talking to colleagues, um, what are you supposed to do? How can you avoid talking like this? Well, I've actually been modeling what you can do instead. Um, when I talk to people, uh, you, you might notice some people talk with their hands or they lean forward when they talk. And if you're watching me now, you might notice that I'm, you know, I'm using these gestures right now even. You can see my eyes um, sort of open or my eyebrows might go up or if I use my hands, you'll see that my hands open uh, actually in the stress syllables, right? It's, it's almost impossible for me to move in the wrong place because the stress of English correlates with the gesture. Okay? So you can start to become a bit more of a gesture user uh, to use your hands when you talk as that will help you spend time on the stressed syllables. And it also gives you time to think a little more carefully or just to have time to think of the next phrase or the next word. So it's a really great uh, placeholder for you to hold the floor while you're speaking and still be thinking about that next phrase without so much stress, emotional stress. Okay, so we have our, our, our uh, verbal stress, which is our acoustic stress from our hand, and you're reducing your emotional stress while you do that by buying yourself some time. Um, so we're going to put that rose right there in our hand, will come up and, um, and we can even do that with our hands here, associate, associate. So try something like that. Let's make a couple of big gestures and then we can come down and make some smaller ones. Let's try, associate. Um, this is my associate. You might use a hand gesture like that. This is my associate, okay? Um, if you don't already talk with your hands, this, this could feel a little bit like a stretch to you. Um, maybe you'll feel like, well, I don't, I usually leave my hands down by my side. Um, if that's the case, we, you can sort of do some smaller gestures down by your side. You can go ahead and open your hand down below, um, down by your thigh, or you can um, have some gestures that are lower. You can try that out too, okay? Um, but what I want you to, to know is what I'm showing you is not just the way I talk. It's the way a lot of people talk. And I wanted to show you a couple of examples as a way to close out this, this small tip for you about using the open hand in other ways. Um, this first video clip is of Oprah Winfrey, fairly famous person. Um, and I'm just going to play a couple seconds and I'd like you to watch what she does with her hands and with her face. I'm playing this silently so that you can appreciate that. I'm gonna come back to the beginning there. Now, I'm going to play it again with the sound. Yeah, what it is you're supposed to be doing, the sooner you are able to get about the business of doing that. The way through the challenge is to get still and ask yourself, what is the next right move? Not think about, oh. Take that phrase, what is the next right move? What is the next right move? That's exactly what she does with her hands there. What is the next right move? So notice how she cues herself to slow down by using her hand. And she actually commands a kind of respect by doing that, people listen because she's using her hands to command that respect with her voice. The second example I'm going to show you is of Jeff Bezos, and I'll play it without the sound as I did the first time, and watch what he does both with his face as well as his hands. Um, there's a transcript in this video, so you'll be able to see what he's saying without hearing it, but you'll be able to hear it in his body language. So the way he's moving his hand is in synchronicity with the stressed syllables of his phrases. 
I'm going to play that for you again now with the voice. You guys will find that you have passions and having a passion is a gift. I think we all have passions and you don't get to uh, choose them. They pick you, but you have to be alert to them. You have, you have to be alert to them. Did you see that? So try that with your hand. You have to be alert to them. You have to be alert to them. Now, you could change that into some other sentence. You need to be at work tomorrow. You need to go to work tomorrow. It can be any sentence that has those three beats in it. And in fact, when you play Blue Canoe and go to the lessons, a lot of our sentences have these three beats like this. Okay? So he uses a pointing finger at that moment. And that is very much in line with what we're doing with the open hand. Okay. Uh, just a little bit more of him because you'll see it, it zooms up on his face a little more closely in just a moment. To be looking for them. And when you find your passion, it's a fantastic gift for you. A fantastic gift. Did you see that? A fantastic gift. Yeah. It's a fantastic gift. Because it gives you direction. It gives you purpose. Uh, you could have a job or you could have a career. You could have a job or you could have a career. So the two-handed, when you have an or statement, your hands are here to help a job or a career. Try that with me. A job or a career. A job or a career. Okay. A manager or an assistant. Try that. A manager or an assistant. So the two words will change on the context, but the stressed idea and the use of your hands is what is especially effective. Okay. Um, so with that, I thought I'd close out my part of the, the presentation tonight and then turn to questions. Uh, but I thought we'd finish out with uh, just a review and a revisiting of the essential vowel sounds of English. Only this time, I'm going to indicate which vowels are these moving vowels, like rose, boat, o. All right. So follow me and repeat after me. And, and make sure that you can see both my picture in the corner, maybe a small version of me, as well as the slide that you're looking at, okay? Here is green tea e green tea e silver pin i, silver pin i. Notice e green was moving upward, uh, because I'm also moving my my muscles here in my jaw. E e okay. E is a non-moving gesture because it doesn't move in the in the mouth either. So silver pin e. Silver pin e. Gray day a. Gray day a. Moving vowel. Red pepper a eh. red pepper a eh. non-moving vowel my jaw my lips and my tongue all stay in the same position a eh. that's different from a the gray sound right black cat a eh. black cat a eh. non-moving position olive sock ah Olive, sock, ah, also non-moving position. Turquoise, toy, oi. Turquoise, toy, oi. So this is a big moving position. It's a big mover, we say. So oi is going to shoot all the way from oi over to a green position. Okay. So give yourself time with your hand to motion that. Oi. Okay. Rose, boat, o. Oh. Rose, boat, o. Oh. We know that one is a moving vowel. Wooden, hook, o. Uh. Wooden, hook, o. Uh. Blue, moon, o. Now this might be difficult to notice. If you have oo in your language, in your first language, maybe it's a non-moving oo. But in English, we have a slight, a slight closing of the lips, oo. So here are the lips, oo. And I'll use that with my hand, oo, okay? Blue, moon, 
ooh, good. A cup of mustard, ah. Uh. A cup of mustard, ah. Uh. Non-moving position, ah. Uh. It's higher than ah, uh. ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay. Purple shirt, er. Purple shirt, er. Good. And then two big movers. Here we go. Brown cow, ow. Brown cow, ow. Mm -hmm. And white tie, I. White tie, I. Okay. So we have this combination of moving and non moving sounds that you can learn more about in Blue Canoe when you go to the videos section. I have um, set almost 20 different videos in there, each one on a different color vowel in the chart. And you'll see which ones are moving and which ones are not moving. And in fact, there's a wonderful video even called Moving and Non-Moving Vowels, okay? Um, and so today, my thought was to share with you how the hand can help you in two ways. Um, and look at all of my gestures here. My two ways are that it can signal the stress, of course, we know this. And the second kind of surprise strategy is to use it for the moving vowels when you're practicing. And then we also talked about how you can start using your hands to command the space or to claim your space as you're speaking. It'll help you slow down, It'll also help you uh, then have the right sounds in the right places. So the open hand becomes this kind of gesture. Uh, and I'm, I'm using a lot right now just to kind of model that to you. Um, but you can do this too, okay? Great, so I'm, I'm happy to open the floor to questions. And you can ask those questions either uh, through the chat, and I'll, I'll show you where that chat is now. Um, the chat is here. Um, so if you find a, sort of a flashing chat button here in Zoom, you can submit a question through the chat, um, or you can just ask a question by opening your microphone. Okay. One question that I had, uh, hi Roland, I see you there. Hello, Karen. Hi. Did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I, I was going to ask, um, uh, one of my students, or actually not, not one, more than one, has uh, troubles with uh, the er sound, the purple shirt. Uh -huh. uh, so if you have any suggestions or recommendations on uh, practicing or developing that er sound, that would be great. Great. Yeah, so part of the trouble of er is that it's uh, represented by this, this letter. You know, we see it so often, this R letter. And that R letter that we see um, represents different sounds in other languages, right? Um, so part of it is, is realizing that the English speaking er is a different sound. It is simply different than all of the R consonant sounds. So that would be the first is really visiting that assumption. Um, and it's a hard one to, to um, unwire. But the second is just to know that in English, that er sound is, is very much a vowel sound. And that's why it's here in the color vowel chart. So that's kind of a surprise. Um, yeah, so if we can differentiate uh, and start to realize that the tongue, as we come up, is going to curl mm -hmm. back a little bit and then not touch the roof of the mouth. So, and that might be difficult to notice. You might, you might be touching the roof of your mouth very briefly with your tongue out of a uh, habit, out of the brain's habit to touch. Um, so you have to go slowly. Ah, uh, we'll start at olive. Ah, uh, 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 for those of you who are teachers in the room, um, if you, if you're a native speaker of English, there are many ways to make that R sound, and it might not be this. But this is what I found with learners mm -hmm. is a very effective way to find that sound. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Raising and curling back of the tongue. Mm. Er, er, uh, right? uh, and, and I come at it. Uh, I come from olive because if you start at the top, you're probably going to touch very briefly with this little mm. flick. So now we can say R, 
er, round mm. report. Mm. Okay. Uh, so you want to put yourself in position. And then after a while, you don't have to start down an olive. But it's a good exercise to start down first. So try that. And that might help. Yeah. All right. Thank you. It's kind of thank a closing you. movement as opposed to the other like open hand. It's more like closing something instead of... Uh, I start from cup of mustard. Uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. uh, something. Uh, yeah, yeah, be sure that, that you're not modeling though that uh, uh, the, the voice mm. stuff, right? It, it, by accident, you could be modeling er, uh, and then they're hearing the uh, part. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so you can start from mustard uh, and hold it so we can really spend time with it. Er, uh, er. Uh. Or, but it is, it's a very closed mouth position, Matthew. You're right. Um, so it's, it's in the center, it's up high in the jaw, and, and it does take practice. Um, so Alexandra mentioned in the chat, um, LR teaching strategies, the main reminder time and again, and you can, have, you can do this too, learners and teachers alike. Um, you can have one position here for er, and then oh, there it's touching, oh. Er, oh. okay, and, and as you're touching here, the tip of your tongue is touching the top of your mouth in kind of a flattened way. That would be different from er, 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 a tap. So this is oh, like, like, like. And then here's er, like rice, er, rice. So a little, a little gesture with the hands could be a little reminder as well. Um, and learners out there, you know, you can use your hands in very powerful ways to come up with small reminders. You don't have to have your hands out front all the time. So find these small ways to remind yourself, you know, touching on the L and no touching on the R. Okay, good. Uh, I see a comment here. I imitate a seal, <laughs> a seal sound and an angry animal sound like err. Um, that's a good way to go to is to change from language into um, imitating that animal sound actually moves into your music brain. So that's, that's why that works. Um, lots of great ideas here. One of your students, uh, hearing from now here, a teacher uh, that you, he can't curl his tongue. No, that's hard. So the, there are a couple ways to get there. As long as he gets up nice and high with his tongue close to the roof of his mouth, it can be uh, budged back. Er, er. So it could be round, like curled this way, R or er. So try the bunched backward, high in the back. Uh, okay. you, you mean um, er or oh, ah, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. You'll have to play with it yeah. to find yeah. position. And, yeah. and on that note, let me touch on, on another comment that came up in uh, when some of you registered, I received questions from you. Um, someone mentioned, that they still can't hear the difference between, in this case, they mentioned silver and green, okay? Um, I'm going to say something that sh might sound uh, worrisome at first, but it's actually to comfort you. If you're a learner of English and you cannot hear the difference between Engl uh, green and silver, you need to stop trying to hear it because your brain is preventing you from hearing it. Instead, we have to know how to produce it. So in a sense, I, I urge you to put that worry aside, I can't hear the difference, and instead work on creating the difference in the ways that I teach you in the videos or the way your own teacher is teaching you. And so in the case of silver and green, we have a move, E, that you can feel here or should be able to. E is a tightening of these two muscles on the sides. E versus non-moving e, e. Okay. In my video, I have more information about green versus silver. But, but back to the bigger question, when you can't hear the difference, that's precisely why you need to use your hands and why you need to practice in a smart way with your hands to make these changes in the behavior um, you won't hear it because, because your brain can't right now. But in time, some of the research is showing us that your hand can teach your mouth and your mouth can start to teach your ear. 
And so in time, you will start to notice the difference between mustard, ah, uh, and olive, ah. Uh. And I've, I've seen students notice it, uh, maybe also because of the jaw position, uh, ah. Uh. So they become sensitized to noticing when they see it. Meaning, um, you know, your brain is is wired not to hear those sounds. So there, there's there's I know it's a great frustration to not hear the difference between two sounds, but just because you're not learning them doesn't mean I'm sorry. Just because you're not hearing the difference doesn't mean that you're not improving. Okay, so so you may want to check in with your teacher or um, or someone else to see how am I doing on my L and R? How am I doing on my green and silver? Now, all of these are pairs that are difficult to perceive as different, depending on your language. Okay, good. Another question. Any other questions? I have a simple question, and mm -hmm. uh, about a taco's toy. Oi, oi, and start with olive sock sound. Oh, thank you. That's a great question. Um, no, in fact, so if we look here on the chart, you'll notice that rose, orange, and turquoise are all together, and they're quite a bit smaller than any of the other color vowels, yeah. right? And now I want you to draw in, in your mind, or maybe with me, an O right around these, okay? Mm -hmm. This O position is the, it's the rounded position, O. So everyone try that, O. Now, once you're in this place, which has all the same position to start, Rose uh -huh. is going to move from O oh, to, to blue. O, oh, okay? Now come back to the same O position, O, oh, and with we have orange door, O, oh, mm -hmm. and we're in purple, O. Oh, and then that last one, your question, we're in the same O position, oh. O, not A, ah, not olive, yeah. O. And that could feel a bit like Auburn for some Auburn. native speakers who have Auburn. Um, but otherwise, start just with that O, the meaning the rounded lips position, O, 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 OI. Okay, OI. Oh. So it comes right across. Hey. You can use your arms to feel that too. Oh. And as my arm goes forward, my tongue mm. also goes forward. So this oh. is, you know, the, the three big, big movers of mm -hmm. English are oi, ow, and I. Yeah. And so those will take more time. And that's when you can have a really good gesture, by the way. <laughs> Start using your hands to, you know, command that attention of the listener. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, well, thank you for joining us today. I'll be doing this every month when we have learners in the room with teachers available. Um, it's wonderful to have you both here together because we all are learners when it comes to opening our awareness and increasing our awareness of what we're really doing in this small space. Um, remember that the chart is available to you in Blue Canoe. You just go right over to the videos and I'm there all the time, um, you know, showing you how these relationships are in your mouth and start using your hand in a slightly different way. See how that works for you. And please report back, you know, let me know um, how things go for you, okay? Thank you for joining me today. We'll see you soon, okay? Thank Thanks, you. Nao. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>